Hey, what's going on guys? Roger here from Mac Height. So I'm just up in our studio getting ready to shoot another video for you. And last week, in honor of the, uh, the cold months that are coming here in Michigan, we did a uh, video on West suits. And uh, as well, we've gotten a lot of great requests outside the realm of just kites lately. One of the most common being doing board comparisons. So just to set the frame for our board comparison videos, I thought I would do one general video first, or rather a three-part series. Uh, namely, we'll start with small boards versus large boards. And then uh, next we'll explain uh, flat boards and rocker boards. And eventually we'll get into construction and stiffness and flex and the different materials that are used and how it relates back to you. So uh, with all that said, this should be pretty fun. Um, we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get to it. So if you've been watching this series for a while now, you know that our bread and butter is the kite versus kite comparisons. And just to get ahead, we've been experimenting with a few other things, like the leash videos or the wetsuit videos, and the next three weeks we'll actually be doing a general board video. So I'm also trying to log some hours in on all the different kites so I can give you the best possible uh, comparison videos. And to be honest with you, I just want to escape the cold a little bit from Michigan. So I'm actually pretty excited. Uh, next week, I'm going to be heading down to Mexico to film for a kiteboarding travel guide for you guys. So uh, if any of you have followed our channel for a while, you might remember the series Chasing the Dream with Crystal Vaness. And we're actually going to be rebooting that series as Destinations. So needless to say, I'm pretty excited about that trip. And uh, on top of that, we'll be filming Versus down there. So like I said in the first video, you know, we may be filming using the studio like we are here today, uh, as well as some at the beach. So uh, this will probably be my first time uh, breaking away from just talking in the studio. And I gotta tell you, it's, it's actually a little nerve wracking. I've, uh, I've kind of defaulted to coming in here because it's good to talk to a camera away from people and it's, it's not exactly easy. You know, I may use this camera or I may experiment with my cell phone out there and we'll see what works, but uh, we'll, we'll likely do a few comparison videos while we're down there and uh, we'll see how that one goes. So anyways, getting back on point here, I wanted to talk to you about a common question that I get on the phone with uh, actually experienced kiteboarders here. So it's not uncommon for somebody who's maybe picking up their first kiteboard in maybe like a decade or so to give us a call and ask about boards. And more often than not, they're actually quite surprised at a recommendation as we usually urge them to go a bit larger than the board that they previously had. The chances are, if you've been kiteboarding for a while now, uh, when you first started kiteboarding, somebody probably set you up on a pretty small board and for good reason. And what it was is uh, kites back in the day just simply didn't have as much V power as modern kites. So, you know, and on top of that, a lot of kite control really depended on the board. And this is still the case with a little more advanced kites. So, uh, you know, we've talked about sea kites and performance kites. And when you're using kites like the Vegas or the Dice or the FX, you know, the board does come back into the equation with controlling the kite. And it becomes less important when you're on free ride kites like the Switchblade or the Evo or the Rally or anything in that vein. Point being here is whether you're a newer rider or even an experienced rider looking, I would actually encourage you to check out some of the bigger board options. So if you've been following our industry for a while or uh, other board industries like wakeboarding or cableboarding, you'll notice that there's a common trend where people are gravitating towards larger boards. So to give you some perspective here, when I learned kiteboarding in 2010, you know, I learned on a 135 kiteboard. Uh, nowadays, you know, I'm the same weight, about 175 pounds, and I actually opt to ride anything from a 140 to a 144, depending on how much rocker that board has. And that's an important point to remember, and we'll cover that in next week's video. So what are the advantages when you're opting for a larger kiteboard? Well, uh, first of all, you're going to get more planability. And what I mean by planability is there's just simply more surface area, and it takes less power from the kite for you to get up and ride. It's also really nice on those gusty days when there's holes in the wind. And what happens when you're on a larger board is uh, because you have more surface area, you can usually generate more speed. It's easier to stay on a plane. You can ride right through them. And on a side note, just from my experience, I found that going with a larger board with a little more rocker, it does make those landings a bit softer. So what about smaller boards? Well, a lot of people really do prefer them and, uh, you know, for good reason. So what happens with a smaller board is you do get a lighter weight board, but uh, what happens is you actually have to rely more on the power from the kite. So a lot of times you'll find a lot of guys that love to be on smaller boards that are easier for, say, board offs or just doing really big airs and they want to, um, you know, do some old school tricks. So going for the smaller board is kind of fun because you're riding out there, you're usually a bit more overpowered. Uh, it's very much a different feel than the larger boards. Some of the trade-offs here are you won't be able to get upwind as well with a smaller board. 
uh, you know, the, the bigger board, it's gonna make it easier to get upwind. Now, what I realized when opting for a bigger board as opposed to a smaller board, like I mentioned in that story about making the transition from a 135 to like a 144, is I had to change my riding style a little bit. You know, when you're on the smaller boards, typically what happens is you use more kite power. And conversely, when you're on a larger board, you don't need as much kite power. So this is when I first learned about board speed and the technique that goes behind generating that pop. But the advantage as well to using a larger board is you can go out a little bit underpowered and this actually makes learning tricks really easy. The falls just don't hurt as much when you're using a smaller kite and you're making up for that with a larger board. So that's something to consider, you know, and like I said, uh, this is, you know, this is completely subjective. So to this I would say to each their own. You know, riding on a smaller board makes for a different style. Usually you're powered up on the kite, maybe a little more old school. You know, if you want to make your life a little bit easier, go for a larger board and you can have a more forgiving session, maybe a little more progression, just because you're riding in softer, more forgiving wind. So I suppose the one trade-off to consider uh, when you do opt for a larger board is they are a bit heavier. So when you're doing tricks and you're trying to really tuck those knees into your chest or go for a grab, you know, you're gonna have a little bit of a heavier board underneath you. But uh, you know, in my experience, I found the trade-off to be completely worth it. And it's really up to you to decide for yourself uh, what benefits you wanna get out of your board. So let's tackle the big question here. What is an appropriate size board for you? Well, there's really one thing to consider and that's weight would be the most important. And secondly, you do need to consider your height and that's simply because you wanna make sure that you have the correct stance. Um, so when it comes to stance, you know, ideally you wanna have your feet you know, lined up with your knees and your shoulders. Some people like to go just outside of their shoulders. Uh, but point being is you do need to be comfortable on your board. And if you'd like to learn more about kiteboarding stance, uh, we actually did a great video with Blake Olson and his series, Ride with Blake, uh, specifically on kiteboarding stance. So I'm going to include a link into that description just so we're not redundant here when talking about this. But check that video out, watch it, and uh, you'll learn a lot from Blake. You know, I've, uh, I've been working with Blake for quite a long time now, and uh, truth be told, helping him with his videos, I've become that much better of a kiteboarder just listening to him talk about the basics and things that I honestly had not thought of before and just the level of body awareness that comes with the kiteboarding. If you haven't had a chance to check out Ride with Blake yet, give us a series a watch. It's great. It's great. You know, Blake is, Blake's an awesome guy, an awesome rider, and uh, I learned a lot from him and I'm sure you have a lot to learn from him as well. So let's start on the lighter side of the spectrum. You know, if you're a rider who's a, under 100 pounds, you know, you're probably going to want to pick a board somewhere in the 115 to 127 range. Uh, and this is where you really want to be careful about that stance uh, because, you know, whether, um, you know, you're a bit shorter or if you're getting a board for your kid, for example, just make sure they have a comfortable stance. Make sure that the, uh, the inserts aren't too wide for them. So that'll be almost equally as important as getting the right weight. So moving up, riders who are between 100 to 150 pounds should probably opt for something in the 132 to 138 centimeter range. And if you weigh between 150 to 170 pounds, go for a 135 or even a 141. Now, for riders weighing in at the 170 to 200 mark, I would encourage you to look at something within the range of 139 to 145 centimeter boards. You know, if you're approaching 200, I do recommend that you look a bit higher on the spectrum. You know, and if you're more like myself, which is, you know, right around 175, anything in that range is going to be good. And just, of course, from my subjective experience, I do prefer usually a board with a, your average rocker line to be about 141 is kind of the sweet spot. And if the board has a lot of rocker, then I'll, I'll go for like a 144. And of course, that's, that's completely subjective. That's just my opinion on that particular topic. Of course, like I said, uh, as we continue this series, I'm going to talk more about rocker line and all those other points to consider on boards. So last but not least, if you are over 200 pounds, uh, we would recommend that you go for anything from a 144 to 165 centimeters. So I think we've hit all the points that I wanted to cover for this week. And like I said, this will be a three part series. So next week we'll dive into rocker lines and the following week we'll get into construction materials, whether it's a carbon board or a wood board or any of the other various materials and how all of those things relate back to you. So hey guys, as I always say, this series is an open forum and it's about getting a conversation going. And uh, you know, I know boards can probably be a bit of a touchy subject. And I've been going through the forums and just checking out the comments, uh, whether it's on our, our channel or in, in Kite Forum or any other places that they get posted. And I've noticed that a lot of you have a lot of really great insights. And uh, you know, just for fun, let's, let's try a little bit of a survey here. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. 
you know, what, um, what size board are you guys currently riding? How much do you weigh? And what size cuts are you using in your quiver? So tell us what you're using and tell us why you're using it. That way when somebody is trying to figure out what size board they wanna pick, you know, again, as always, they'll hear what I had to say and they'll hear what you had to say. So hey, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And until next week, this has been Rygo at Mackay.